G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. We are in the desktop of Endeavor OS and this is the XFCE desktop environment. We're going to be looking at installing Endeavor OS on this Toshiba laptop of mine. This box here looks like it's a, a welcome screen type box. Uh, read information offline. There's issues with the current Calamari's offline installer. On the manual partition, do not use swap with Hibernate. It will result in not having a swap. If you want that, take swap without hibernating and configure it after install. On a manual partition on EFI systems, on creating the FAT32 EFI partition, there is no flag ESP anymore. Choose boot instead. All right, so I've done one install already and it complained that there was no ESP. So I'm going to do this install again and see whether that is the case. Best practice will be to create Partitions and flags with GParter before starting the installer and choosing the manual partition on the installer to use this partitions. Yes, yeah, so we can use the manual installer there. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So we'll do what it offers. Our info on our website and there's a slight, um, looks like a slight uh, spelling error there. Website instead of site. That's okay. They can fix that up. Um, so what I'm going to do is click Create Partitions. And like I said, I've already installed this on here, but I did put a Linux swap. So we're going to delete all this. Delete it all. Apply that. Create a new partition. And that's going to be 512 megabytes. It's going to be primary. And it will be a FAT32. And we'll add that. And just to make sure we are GPT, yep. Right click and create new again. 61440 for a 60 gig, perfect 60 gig hard drive. Primary partition, ext4, add that. And we'll take new again, take the defaults, add that. That's the remainder of the disk. Apply that and apply. Close that. Now that's complete, we can start the installer. Just to run back through this information here, what it says is um, on a manual partition on EFI systems, on creating the FAT32 EFI partition, there is no flag ESP anymore, choose boot instead. Best practice will be to create partitions and flags with GParter before starting the installer and choosing the manual partition on the installer to use this partitions. That's what I normally do anyway. Just wondering uh, if we go to create partitions again, G parted. Manage flags. So this is the part that I'm wondering about. On a manual partition on EFI systems, on creating the FAT32 EFI partition, there is no flag ESP anymore, choose boot instead. So what if I use boot ESP, which I did on my last install and that worked fine. So I'm a little bit confused about that information. Best practice will be to create partitions and flags with GParted before starting the installer and choosing the manual partition on the installer to use these partitions, yep. So set flags with GParted. So I'll do that anyway. I'll go for boot and ESP because that worked for me fine before. So that is done. 
and we've got an option here to install down here. Uh, I did close that uh, welcome screen, I didn't mean to do that. American English, next. Perth Australia, English Australian, manual partitioning. Now we're going to edit that and our models will format boot EFI and it's got boot selected so that should be fine and that will be 60 gig that's my root partition so we'll format that um, install to root which is where the operating system is installed and the rest is my data partition I'm going to do nothing with that and go next And I'm going to select use the same password for the administrator account and click next. It'll tell you down here what it's going to do. Format 512 megabyte partition on dev SDA1 and format the 60 gig partition SDA2 with EXT4. Set up FAT32 SDA1 mount point boot EFI. Install Endeavor OS on EXT4 on SDA2. So let's install that. That is the install of Endeavor OS complete. I will reboot the system, set up Simple Screen Recorder, and hopefully, will hopefully reboot and set up Simple Screen Recorder. And then I can let you know that everything's gone okay. And I may even look at um, just doing a, a quick post install video on uh, maybe creating a swap file which is probably sounds like his best thing to do so hopefully all going well i will see you in the freshly installed desktop here we are back in the desktop of endeavor os everything has booted fine so um, creating the boot esp on the uh, within g parted seems to have done the job and it's booting fine so there's no problem there so we're just going to have a quick uh, look at the system. First of all, I uh, might actually update uh, sudo pacman-capital-s-y-u, I believe, is the update. And we have 365 megabytes of data to download. We'll do that first. Y for yes. So we already have an, an error there. Hopefully that's not too much of a of an issue there. You will notice that the desktop changed after a little time. I'm not sure whether there's something managing the desktop there, um, the wallpapers there, or whether that was just part of the update. I'm not really sure about that. But that's the update complete. So what I'm going to do now is clear that off. Now, thanks to um, Dave at Big Daddy Linux Live, Dreaming Wolf, um, told me it's Control Shift and the plus key to um, zoom in, which uh, I, I just couldn't work out. So I'm glad he told me that one because that was um, driving me nuts, that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do something that I've actually never done before, is create a swap file, which I've never, ever done before. So I believe the command is F-A-L-L-O-C-A-T-E dash I. It's going to be 8 gig. Now, I'm not sure if that's dash I. It could be a dash L. I think it's an L. Now, if you're doing megabytes, you would go 512 megabytes capital M 
I'm doing gigabyte, so I'm just going to go 8 with a capital G with a space forward slash swap file. Um, and yes, it'd probably help to use sudo. <laughs> and password. And that should have been achieved. So now what we need to do is chmod 600 forward slash swap file, which gives it um, a world readable swap file. And I did it again, didn't I? Okay, now we're right. So we need to format it to swap. So we need to make swap forward slash swap space forward slash swap file. And we probably need sudo again. I keep forgetting sudo. And we've got a UUID there. So we need to activate the swap file. So that's swap on forward slash swap file, swap file. Ah, oh, sudo. How many times have I forgotten sudo? And we need to adjust our FS tab. So we do nano, sudo nano, sudo. Don't know what's wrong with me tonight. Um, Etsy, FS tab. And we go down the bottom here, and I believe we make forward slash swap file. None. So I'm uh, pressing the tab key between each one. Swap tab defaults tab zero tab zero control o to save then press enter and then control x to exit and i believe that should be done so hopefully that's all correct so if i've done anything incorrect there uh, i would appreciate somebody telling me but um working off the arch wiki here so it should be right i'm not sure whether you needed to put the uuid for that in fs tab but um it doesn't recommend that. It doesn't say that on the Arch Wiki. That should be fine. Don't know what's happened to the uh, panel down the bottom here, but a few things have gone a little bit strange on here. But I have to think that we need a reboot since um, since the update. I'll have uh, a quick, just a very quick look around the system to see what's in here for everybody to see. So let's just have a quick look. So we'll go to accessories, development, graphics, Restretto, image viewer, internet, Firefox, transmission, multimedia, parole media player. Now I didn't have a good experience with parole media player. I can't remember which um, distro that was. It was um, not playing very well, but this one seems to be playing really well. And just like the um, media player in um, D-Pin, you can actually hit the um, the center of the screen and, and pause and play. So that's pretty handy. Well, at least play anyway. It allows you to play. I didn't check pause. It's the only thing I didn't do. Araj calendar. Heap of settings there. And the system. So... I did install this a few days ago, but now I've decided to uh, install just uh, checking out the feedback on the Endeavor OS website. So I just thought that was important to do that um, because I did go in blind and uh, I had a second thought. <laughs> so this is the Endeavor website here. So just some of the um, things I'd like to tell you that's that's going to be on offer with uh, Endeavor OS is uh, currently what I have used here is the offline installer. That's what they're calling it, uh, which uses the Calamaris installer. But they're also looking at an online installer with 10 desktop environments to choose from with i3 Window Manager, OpenBox, Mate, XFC, Cinnamon, Gnome, 
Gnome, Deepin, Budgie, and KDE. Was that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 9. Where's the 10th one? <laughs> oh, base. These are, oh, base is one of them. Okay, all right. So that's their plan to do that. Currently, that is not working. It's only the offline installer that's working at the moment. So what we're, we have is the XFCE desktop that we're currently using here. So it does say down the bottom here, due to, due to technical problems, Endeavor OS will launch with the offline installer only. Read our announcement on this over here. So let's have a quick look over there. So the beta releases have been all about the offline installer. Calamaris, as you know, Cinchi has caused serious problems to be working outside the Antigos ecosystem, and it needs a complete rewrite to work. So the Phoenix installer by Reborn OS is getting more into shape, but needs more time to properly function. Um, Joe is working on a guideline for people who like to join in. In the meantime, we've decided to launch Endeavor OS with the stable version of the offline installer. This is temporarily, this is temporary until we get the online installer working. Either that's going to be Cinchi, Phoenix, or another online installer. So that's uh, very promising stuff there, I must say, and I'm looking forward to that. So they're the things that's going on with Endeavor OS at the moment. I will uh, continue to use this. I haven't really had a chance to use it since I installed it a few days ago. So I'm going to spend this weekend hopefully having a good look around and trying everything on here. It's an arch base, so I'd have to assume that most things should work as things work in arch. It should be easy to install Zoom. And that's another thing I read and I cannot remember where I read it. It must have been on here somewhere. So it says here we are already we've already announced that Endeavor OS will be having a smaller repo than Antigos. All the DE's desktop environments except i3, WM and Openbox will have a small layer of customization with the Arc theme and icons. Some of the apps and packages you can expect are Firefox, Gparted, Kalu and Yay. And they say we are aware we are aware that we're shipping some AUR packages by default, but it's over fifty percent less than Antigo shipped. And since this distro is built with the Antigo's community in mind, we still want to give them some good old Antigo's convenience in our repo. Our goal was always to deliver a system that's close to Arch and not vanilla Arch. We are still convinced that despite these pre-installed packages, Endeavor OS will be a system with less bloat than most of our competitors with a similar active and friendly community. So they're shipping yay by default. So if we have a quick look at that before I finish up the video, let's just try sudo yay zoom. Oh, you're not supposed to run yay as root, are you? So I might just, I don't know what's happened with the font. Everything's gone a little bit crazy in here since the update, so I'll probably need a restart. So I wouldn't worry too much about what it looks like here. I just don't want to restart and start um, recording again. Yay, Zoom. Let's check that out. Looking for Zoom, video conferencing and web conferencing service so that's zoom there so yay is working no problem out of the box that's pretty cool so we don't have to bother installing yay so i'm pretty happy with that so that is the install and a quick look around and some quick information for endeavor os hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it interesting and informative and thanks for watching